Good morning. Today I'm here in front of my coffee maker and I feel sort of like I'm on HSN, but I'm not. Um, I wanted to do a video, make a video talking about our new coffee maker that we love very much. That was sort of expensive, but um, like we're kind of transitioning into making espresso at home. I did want to kind of share this, our experience of transitioning from like a Keurig and a single cup maker to something that makes shots of espresso uh, because this is something we've never had before. When I grew up, we had a bun and it was just like a drip coffee maker. And then the Keurig machines came out and that's what we had for the longest time. And we had the same machine over and over and over again and it just kept dying on us. And when it died the last time, we bought this one. And I learned about this one from Adam and Sherry Lake, but I'll link their channel down below. They love it. And I used it when I spent a lot of time with them in Alaska. So I learned how to use it. And I didn't know if we would use it here. I'm actually shocked that we use it so much here. But first, um, I'm not gonna start with this. I'm actually gonna start with cold brew because we make cold brew coffee at home also. This is something that's sort of new to us and we've been doing it for, I don't know, maybe six weeks now and we've kind of almost perfected the process. So it takes like 16 to 20 hours in the fridge. So I did start it yesterday. I will insert that footage now. I'm gonna get the cold brew out of the fridge because it's been sitting in the fridge overnight and then we'll begin the filter process. When I made the cold brew last night, I got out a pitcher and my coffee and I scooped 11 scoops of coffee grounds into my pitcher. Yeah, I think you can make this in anything. I just like to make it in something with a wide mouth just because it's easy to dump the coffee in. I don't use a filter. You could put your coffee in like a little filter or cheesecloth bag or something. I do 11 scoops and three pints of water. This pitcher has measurements on the side of it, which is really handy. I put the lid on and then it goes in the fridge and it's really that easy. So I have the cold brew that I started yesterday. It's very cold and it looks like sludge in there. I have a mesh sieve and a like great big, actually this is a Pyrex measuring cup. It doesn't have to be this. I just like that it has the wide mouth and the pour spout so I can pour it into the pitcher when it's done filtering. And then I have like a traditional coffee filter. So I'm gonna put that in the mesh sieve and then I'll start filtering the coffee. You could use like a cheesecloth. If your mesh sieve is really, really fine, you probably can skip the coffee filter part. I know they make special cold brew devices where you can make your cold brew at home. This is just like using the equipment that we have to make our own cold brew. I do like to let the coffee kind of filter through I don't want to overfill the filter basically so I will let it kind of drain out a little bit before I will pour the rest of this in and it doesn't really take all that long maybe 10 minutes generally a pitcher of cold brew after I've made one batch generally it'll last about a week if one of us is drinking it if two of us are drinking it it'll last three or four days so this is our coffee maker. We've got our coffee beans, collagen powder, decaf coffee, filters, and then coffee syrups in the back. And then this is our coffee maker. It's a brand new machine to us. We've never had anything like this before. We have had combination machines in the past that have made both Keurig cups or K-cups and drip coffee, but we've never had one that makes espresso. So we're really excited for this one. We use this side more than we use this side, actually. I do have one complaint about this machine, and it is the pitcher. It leaks when you pour drip coffee, which might be why we don't use that side very often. It comes with the handle and then attachments to pull shots. You get a double and a single. So here's the single, the double's in here. When you fill the espresso tank with water, there is a max fill line in the tank itself does come out. You can pull it with that handle. I'm not going to. And then the drip coffee water tank is in here. You fill this way. Your beans go in here. It does come with a filter basket. We still use filters. 
when we make drip coffee. Making drip coffee, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. I'm not gonna show you how to do that. It's really simple. We add a filter and then our beans and fill the water, close it up, make sure this is positioned correctly, and then you push the on button. It's that simple. Making an espresso shot is a little bit more complicated. It's a little bit more involved. So I'm going to show you how we do that right now. I forgot to tell you, this is a steaming cup for milk and this did not come with the coffee maker. I could have bought the set that came with one of these, but um, I think it was out of stock or something. And so I just bought one on Amazon. It was really pretty cheap, like, I don't know, six bucks or something. So we do have one of those, but I bought it separately. And also this is a milk frother, like a handheld sort of power tool kind of thing. Looks like a tiny whisk. Um, and we do use this, it came with a stand, it's really cool. We use that to froth milk sometimes if we are making cold brew. And so I'll show you how I pour a cup of cold brew also, but I wanna start this process first because I need my coffee this morning. So there's a button over here on the side and you push that one to turn it on. This green light means that it's heating up. You can kind of hear that it's doing something or I can, I don't know if you can on the camera. When this is on, this will light up when it's ready. If you want to steam milk, which you can do because it, do, it does have that attachment, you have to push this button and that will preheat the water for steaming. I'm going to leave that off for now. We will do that today and I'm gonna do something special with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of what I wanna steam in here and it's not exactly milk. So now I'm playing the waiting game. It doesn't take very long to heat up. So I'm gonna go pour the milk in this and then I will prep the coffee for this. All right, that's ready and I'm really excited. It's my first one of the season for that. I guess I should just go ahead and tell you this is eggnog and I'm really excited about it. Also, I didn't mention, I noticed this when I was pouring it. Um, the one that I found, the, the steaming cup that I found, has lines, measurements inside, which is really helpful. So next, I've got my double shot ready. Well, I'm gonna put the coffee in. It came with a scoop. The only thing I use this scoop for is pressing the shot down, kind of tamping it. Um, I don't use this as a scoop. I just use it to press. So I'll show you that. I fill this up and I do press it twice. So I'll do one scoop of coffee. You can see we're preheated already. So I do one scoop and then I press it down, which makes room for the next one. And the next one's generally not another full scoop. It's just, it's just part of a second one. And then I tamp again. And then this just kind of fits up in here and you twist it in and now it's time for a mug. I'm gonna go for Winnie the Pooh today because he's just too darn cute. I should mention you need a really short mug to fit under here. Sometimes we go ahead and we just brew right in the steaming mug. Um, I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna brew in my coffee cup so we've got our coffee beans or grounds in here. This is already tamped in. This is preheated. So it doesn't pre-measure for you. So you kind of have to tell it how long you want it to go for. Um, a very quick Google search told me that espresso shots should pull in about 20 to 30-ish seconds. I've gotten to the point where I can tell by color, by the way that it looks, where I want it to stop um, pouring, but generally like I'll go for approximately 26 seconds with this machine. Sometimes I'll go longer if it looks like, you know, I put more coffee in it or if it looks like it's still, um, looking fine when it's coming out of there. So you push and I count using my watch and then you push to turn it off. And then since I'm going to be steaming some eggnog today, I will immediately push this. This is still gonna drip 
for a couple of seconds. I don't like to take this out unless I'm gonna take my coffee cup with me because I will make a mess all over the floor. This does tend to take a couple of minutes to heat up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. And you can see, maybe. I've got a beautiful cup with a shot of espresso in it, or a double shot. I'm going to dispose of this and I'll be right back. When the steamer is almost ready, you can hear it kind of bubbling. This down here is a reservoir, and so this is where it keeps all the water that comes out because of the pressure. We have to empty this all the time, and it doesn't bother me. I'm sure it will bother some people, but emptying that doesn't bother me at all. All right, it's green, we're ready to steam. So I stick this in over here, and then this lever gets twisted. All right, so when you take your milk out because it's been steaming, I like to flip this over under here so that it drips onto that instead of onto the countertop. And then I'll move you over to the counter so you can see how I make my cup of coffee. I should mention, um, I let our cold brew drip, so I've, it's, ba it's basically done. I've got our filter full of coffee beans and a pitcher full of cold brew coffee. So I'm gonna go ahead and dispose of this and then pour my coffee into here. Just enough left for me to show you what I do with some cold brew coffee. But first, hot coffee while it's still hot. So I've got my shot of espresso, my double shot. I've got my steamed eggnog. If I was just doing milk, I could have added some syrup to this. Sometimes if I'm doing cold milk, I'll add my syrup to, directly to my milk and then froth it with the hand frother. Um, and I will show you that for the cold brew. But for this guy, I'm just gonna dump it in. And no, I don't do latte art, it's not pretty. And I kinda don't care at all. Well, that's kinda pretty. So, I just made an eggnog latte at home in, I don't know, five minutes, and it didn't cost me $6. So, while that cools down, because that is really, really hot, I'm going to uh, make some cold foam sort of for my cold brew. I'm not gonna make a whole lot, I'm just gonna make enough to show you, but I start with this. I'm gonna pour some milk in here. To that milk in the milk, or in the, yeah, in the frother, I'm going to add a tiny bit of syrup, like maybe a teaspoon. I don't like a whole lot. If you like it really sweet, do whatever you want. I don't really know what your process is for sweetening your coffee. So I've got my milk and my sweetener in here. I'm missing something, my frother. So I've got my frother. I love using this thing, it's so much fun. It's even better when it has fresh batteries in it. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So I'm just gonna froth this up. And it doesn't take long, that was real speed. So um, now I need a cup to put this and my cold brew in. I don't know what it is about cold brew that makes me feel like a mason jar is appropriate, but I feel like that's the only way to drink cold brew. You could froth your milk in your cup and then pour your cold brew on top, which is what I should have done. So I like to start with that on the bottom because I feel like when you pour your coffee on top, it mixes it up because the cold foam is sort of thick and it doesn't want to mix up. But when you pour your coffee on top, like that, it kind of mixes up. Now, yes, it's really pale. If you like really, really strong cold brew, I don't, and I don't know why. I like cold brew better now than I have ever in my entire life because it's less acidic, less bitter than traditional like hot brewed coffee. Um, and so it's a little bit easier on my stomach than traditional coffee. That doesn't mean it's my favorite but I will drink it. So I'm gonna drink this and I'm gonna drink my eggnog latte. But that is my coffee video. I'm really curious 
how you guys like to make coffee. How do you, like what machine do you use? What beans do you use? Um, what kind of coffee do you drink every day? Does it matter what the temperature is outside? I know some people don't like cold brew when it's cold outside. I'm one of those people. So let me talk about our coffee maker for just one more second. I really love this thing. I'm so glad I found it from Adam and Sherry. It has been so good for us because we make fewer trips to Starbucks and that's just the truth. Like if we can make an eggnog latte at home in five minutes and it doesn't cost us six bucks, we don't have to stop, we don't have to wait, we don't have to pay, like it's just better. So we love this thing. Um, the only thing that I don't like about it is the drip coffee pitcher and it leaks. And I wonder if it just needs a little bit of like, I don't know, putty or flex glue or flex seal or whatever that stuff is. Um, cold brew is a new thing to me and I do kind of like it. Um, I didn't show you up close, but you can see there is some like foam in there, which is, I really, it's actually interesting. And the frother is great. I will link to the frother below. I think you can buy the coffee maker on Amazon and if I can find it for a reasonable price, I will link to it. I know that when I bought our coffee maker, this one, when I bought this, it was more expensive on Amazon than it was on Target. And with Target, I could buy it online, pick it up in the store, and it was ready in less than two hours. So, I mean, that's up to you guys. I will, if I can find it on Amazon, I will link to it just because they do the free two day shipping. If you have Prime, like it's, everybody shops from Amazon, you know? Um, and you may not have a Target near you, I don't know. Anyway, that's gonna be it. I've made some coffee, now it's time for me to drink some coffee. Tell me all of your coffee tips, tricks, secrets, hacks, favorites. Leave them in a comment below if you're a coffee drinker um, because I can't get enough. I just, I love being able to make coffee at home. I like that, it's really nice. Anyway, you guys will see me in another video really, really soon.